Everyone, let's get started. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming to my presentation. My name is Roger Fusselman. I'm a member of Soul City Improv, which is an improv group that does, that's been, do, been around for 12 years now. I've been a member for most of those years. I, I'm a speaker in Toastmasters, and I've been teaching at this university in Goyang, and I have a little bit of teaching experience elsewhere, too. And so um, I'll give you my contact information at the end, but a focus today is on improv as a kind of classroom activity and teacher development. And the best way to get started, I think, is to jump into it. Uh, the first thing to do is let's make a big circle up here. Yes, that's what this room is for. Okay. 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 This game is called Awesome. This is a warm up. Uh, and we just make a big circle right here. Yeah. And what you're going to do is you're going to say your name, uh, say something that happened yesterday, this morning, last week, whatever. And then everyone goes, Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, my name is Roger, and I think I broke up with somebody last Tuesday. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. My name is Beyonce. Uh, I was, uh, I was tear. Uh, I, I got tear yesterday. <laughs> awesome. Uh, my name is Michael, and I had my first Dunkin' Donuts coffee mocha roll in like three weeks this morning. Awesome. <laughs> my name is Titus. I read an interesting book yesterday. Awesome! My name is Natasha. Yesterday I ordered pepperoni pizza with extra pepperoni. Awesome! My name's Doug. My car got a nice sticker for parking in the wrong place last night. Awesome! <laughs> My name is Sean. I worked uh, until 2 p.m. this morning. Awesome! <laughs> My name is Alexis, and my cat threw up on the floor yesterday. Awesome! <laughs> Mike threw up two days ago. <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> Didn't say his name! <laughs> my name is Martin, and this morning I spent half an hour playing with my new baby. Awesome! awesome. Okay, very good job. <laughs> okay, uh, our next one, uh, uh, this is another circle game. Sometimes having warm-ups when you do the improv activities is a good thing to do. Uh, this is called uh, Here Is Your. I made it for a class. I think it's a little similar to an activity you had just mm -hmm. done. You, you take something, you try to mime a shape, try to mime a shape, and then you hand it to somebody, and, they press, and you say, here is your whatever it is. And then you say thank you, and then you, and the first person says you're welcome, and then you change the shape, mm -hmm. and then you hand it to someone else. Mm -hmm. So uh, Martin, if you could uh, mime a shape, hand it to me, and uh, we'll change, we'll go around. Okay. okay. Oh, I thought it was a baby. It's not a baby. <laughs> it's not a baby. It was a baby. <laughs> Here is your baseball bat. Thank you. You're welcome. Here is your Wimbledon Women's Tennis Championship. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> so change it. Oh. It is a it is a wall. <laughs> yeah. Change it. Change it. <laughs> Here is your pepper roll. Do you uh, know pepper roll? <laughs> yeah. Can I eat it? No. Yeah. Okay. What do we say? You're uh, welcome. No, no. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here is your katana. Yeah. I, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> sword, Japanese sword. Here is your bicycle. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you have to change it. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, 
here is your unicycle. Oh. Oh. unicycle. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Here is your baby. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Baby? Yes, yes. yes. Change and I'm afraid it. you have to change the baby. <laughs> Sorry. It's your baby. It's very gentle. Okay. Oh, no, that was not. Okay. Here is your baby pacifier. Pacifier? Yes. Yeah. You stick it in the mouth. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you something very. Oh, oh you're thank you. Thank you. You're yeah. <laughs> this one. Oh. <laughs> Here's some money. Oh, hey, thank you. Money, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 Here's your baby. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Here is your son. S U N. Thank you. You're welcome. It's very warm. Mm. I made mean, it small enough for your hands. All right, good job. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is the kind of thing that I've done with uh, like third graders uh, at Hagwan. And in that environment, uh, some of the kids are lower anyway but they can at least do the shape thing. And it's something I'm going to look forward to. Very simple pattern. They can add other things, like a lot of you were adding other things, et cetera. Um, so we I do it in separate circles, but I think with the group that we have, it's fine. Okay, this game is called What Are You Doing? And it's very simple. What you do is B, B is the first player, and B pantomime something. Uh, and then A says, what are you doing? And you might pantomime something like this. Oh, what are and you doing? I'm driving a truck. Mm -hmm. And the next person has to drive a truck. Mm. And then that person says, what are you doing? And if you're driving the truck, you can't say I'm driving a truck. Mm -hmm. You have to say something else. Mm -hmm. And this is a good game to kind of push somebody, the next person, into, mm -hmm. uh, into doing something they don't want to pantomime. Oh, let's go this way. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like your sense of vindictiveness. Uh, okay. So, um, okay. So you uh, ask me. I'll do so. Okay. Okay. So. What are you doing? I'm shopping for oranges. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you should say that. Yeah, yeah. No, say, ask me. What are you doing? Oh, oh what are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm eating strawberries. Uh, I'm eating strawberries. So now I have to eat strawberries. What are you doing? Uh, I'm playing baseball. Oh, okay, I can do that. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, give them a few more seconds to okay. do something. Yeah. Let me, you know, let me, let me see it go. <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Oh, this. I'm feeding. The cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're so cute. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm dancing in a club. <laughs> <laughs> The PG version of doing the strip tease. <laughs> what are you doing? Doing my homework. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I'm making pancakes. Mm. Mm. Mix bowl batter, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh I suck. <laughs> That's cool. You're like a real chef. Um, See, I'm petting a kangaroo. Uh, petting a kangaroo. <laughs> you have to pet a kangaroo. <laughs> now it's kind of hopping, so you have trouble. <laughs> but how do you pet a? I think it's petting a wallaby. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? 
I'm at a heavy metal concert. <laughs> oh. I'm going well, to try to do that thing. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm moshing at a heavy metal <laughs> Moshing? Moshing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jumping up and down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, man, like, what are you doing? I'm take a, taking a picture. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, sometimes when if you have bigger classrooms, one thing to keep in mind is you could start an activity with the better students. Sometimes uh, going in the uh, a direction, like if there if there are students that you know that are better at these activities, you can go in that direction and you can you can mime that sort of thing. So that separate circles is one thing to consider. Uh, I think another activity I'd like us to do is called "Where Have Your Fingers Been?" Now this is singing and clapping. So it'll go like this. You clap on the red. Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Okay, and so you two fingers up like this. And uh, one person, give me, uh, give you a, minute, a suggestion. So can you give me a suggestion for where my fingers have been? Yeah, where have my fingers been? Give me a location. Bank, uh, bank, oh. school, Paris. Uh, uh, Paris uh, usually not a, 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 I guess, on location, but only one person will do it for now. So the other fingers can go down. Okay, so your fingers can go down. But ask me where have, so, um, so I'll put these fingers up, and then someone else will give a suggestion. In Paris. In Paris. Oh, Nadine. Yes, Philip. I love, isn't that the Eiffel Tower beautiful? Oh, yes, it is. Hey, let's go over there. Gondola? Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't Venice? No, it's Paris! I said Paris! Oh, I made a mistake. I still love you. Me too. And then you say, and that's where my fingers have been. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, one, two, three, four. Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? In a submarine. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we better put the periscope up. Oh, why? Well, because we want to see if there are any ships. I don't think there are any ships. Well, let's put it up anyway. But we're down too deep. Well, okay, don't put it up. And that's where my fingers have been. <laughs> Hold on just one second. Uh, there was a lot of, no, I won't, no, I won't, no, I won't. Uh, if you're in a submarine, do submarine things. Don't just say no. Say uh, yes to the situation and add more information. Let's try uh, that again. Okay. Uh, oh, let's put the periscope up. Okay, let's put it up. Oh, is that a ship there? I think, yes, yes, <laughs> it's a ship. <laughs> Oddly enough. <laughs> It has a big sail. Yeah, it's so huge and triangular. And that's where my fingers have been. All right. All right. Okay, so this time, now let's separate into two groups. Okay, so let's have uh, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. So two groups, okay? And let's do the same kind of thing. Okay. Okay, one, two, three, four. Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Oh, fingers been? Oh, fingers been? Um, okay. Uh, at the bank. Where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? How much is in my account? The account is having uh, zero balance. Oh, I'm quite disappointed. Okay, see you next time. That's where my fingers are being. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, one, two, three, four. Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Class. Oh, no, I'm not sure. okay. I'm a ballerina. I'm a ballerina. Okay. Okay. Turn. That's beautiful. That's where I have it. Where my fingers been? They were in sync too. Where have your fingers been? Oh, 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 where have your fingers been?
have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? At the cafe. So, cafe. What do we need? Mm. Oh, I want some lovely apples. Cafe, okay. Oh, Anything else? So nice. oh. Applesauce. Oh, what do, what do you, what we do have you to eat a real dinner, you know. Let's okay. Oh, uh, Let's get some. Frappuccino. Udon. You drink. Okay. You're just getting, I think, cool. And that's where my fingers have been. <laughs> Henry, don't start. Where, where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Oh, where have your fingers been? At the zoo. At the zoo. Okay, here you go. How are your symptoms? Well, my oh, leg is feeling the lion better. has the I feel a bit dizzy, a little sick. Okay, babies. I love Christian beds and I'm oh. the doctor. Like, thank you, nurse. That's very cute. Thank you. Enjoy the hospital meal. Yeah, that's all right. Different voice. Uh, okay, <laughs> keep going. One more time, yeah. Where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Where have your fingers been? Store. So you Mom, can we get that puppy, please? No, we already have too many pets. But Mom, please, I really oh. want a new puppy. Okay, then, you can pick the one you like. Can you see Thanks, Mommy. I'll study extra hard. No, <laughs> and that's where my fingers have been. Did everybody get a chance to do it? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, well, then, uh, feel free to find a seat. Oh, okay. okay. That's where my fingers are being. Okay, good job. All right. Find a seat. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time for the free stuff portion of this. Uh, here you are. Here you are. Here you are. Lovely notebook. What? Are we playing categories? You're not playing categories. You're playing oh. something else. In fact, that something else is up to you and your partner. Why do I say that? Because the element of choice is a very good thing to have educational things. So we, let's see, maybe one, two, uh, maybe uh, you two are sort of darker. Uh, so let's see, one, two, three, four, okay. Okay, so maybe the three of you could do some, oh, no, hold on. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Does everyone have a partner? Ah, smart. Oh, dude, I forgot. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, I do have more copies in case you want to read it more often than once. Uh, and uh, there's, there's, so there's two games. If you look on the where it says B, games in pairs. Uh, first game is called the alphabet game. And you could use, basically you could use any letter you want. I recommend skipping J, K, Q, X, or Z. And the idea is you get a location and you choose a letter. So you might say department store, you might choose T, and each line goes in circular alphabetical order. So you might say if T, department store. That's a lovely coat, coat you have here. Uh, and the other person has to speak with you. Uh, are you sure you want to buy this? It looks expensive. Then the first person has to speak with V. Very expensive. I think it would be a good thing. And the next person has to speak with W, right? Why are you buying it? You know you don't make much money. And W, X, you could skip X if you want to. Or you could cheat. Expensive is my... <laughs> <laughs> or you, you, Y, well, you think I don't make much money, but actually I do. And so you can skip certain letters, and I've underlined those on the handout. Uh, that's one possibility. Another possibility is the story spine. Uh, once upon a time, uh, that established setting and character. Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Roxy. Every day, that establishes a regular routine. Every day, Roxy would polish her Maserati. Uh, she loved, uh, you know, fancy, expensive cars. But one day, that breaks the routine. But one day. Somebody stole her beloved Maserati, right? Okay, because of that, builds from the one day. So one day leads to the change. Because of that, Roxy called the police and said, look, someone took my Maserati. I want, him, I want the Maserati back alive, but I want him dead. 
Okay, because of that, because of that, because that builds cause and effect. Because of that the police contacted as many people as they possibly could and took Roxy in the car to looking for them. Because of that they found somebody with the Maserati. Uh, because of that um, they discovered the identity of the owner of the Maserati, which was the mother that Roxy didn't care for anymore, that felt jealous because she didn't have the Maserati. Until finally, Roxy broke down in tears and cried and said, okay, I'll give you the Maserati. Just love me again. And ever since then, that finishes a new routine. And ever since then, now Roxy doesn't care for the Maserati anymore. And ever since then, she was much closer to her mother and sold the Maserati for charity or something like that. Okay, so you get the sense, right? So you could choose one or the other. Choose which I, Don't use Roxy or Maserati as examples. Uh, come up with your own and just choose either game. Whichever game you want. Okay. Mm you have to choose in ten seconds. Mm, okay, so which one would you like to do? Oh, okay, action. Both of you. So you start, you start sad and you end funny, you start funny and sad. That sucks. What does that tell you about, you know, they learn that. You could do both ways. You could even challenge another group. Say, okay, I want you to start nice and end with sad. Yeah. This, this technique, this was developed for uh, improvising a full length play. Like a full length play of an hour, an hour and a half on stage. Just to have that structure. Well, in the movies, they'll say, give me a character. Uh, yeah. That okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, you. You. I guess so. Uh, I. I haven't thought of weaponizing this as a competitive thing, but that's fine. Okay. Twenty seconds. Okay, you finished? Okay, good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. Uh, good job. Oh my okay. god, we got, we got validation! Of course no one saw it. There's oh, okay. no scene that it, I've seen that in this time. Wait, I feel like my teeth are... What happened to the movie? Uh, until? 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 
my boss makes money. <laughs> Very good. I look forward to seeing you then. Wonderful. You should, you should visit me to see my lion. You're really great. I hope we can meet again. All right. Good job. Okay. Okay. So I noticed most people are doing uh, Story Spine, some people are doing Alphabet Game. You've probably seen Alphabet Game on a show called Whose Line Is It Anyway, which started in the UK and later migrated to the United States. Uh, some of the same performers were on both shows. Uh, you can do that same game in Korean, ga, na, da, etc. You could probably do it. Uh, don't ask me to do it because my Korean's not there yet. Uh, uh, the Story Spine was developed for improvising full plays, like an hour, an hour and a half on stage. I've done this with other performers. And eventually it got so good that it was just such a wonderful structure for coming up with stories very quickly. So your own students, they, I've had them do this in writing, I've had them do it in different ways. Uh, they can come up with certain things, you can model it. I, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't use Three Little Pigs, I used Cinderella. Cinderella is very easy to model with this sort of thing. Very common fairy tale. Uh, what you have there is the possibility of getting through stories very quickly. And this works for happy stories and sad stories. There's another structure called the beat sheet, which is used by screenwriters. Uh, and the goal there is specifically to come up with a, like a Hollywood blockbuster structure film. Uh, but this is a little bit more flexible and does allow for tragedy. You two had tragedy in the back. Okay, sweet. Thank you so much for your tragedy. Okay, moving on. Uh, I, uh, now I want to try a different thing, this time in groups. Uh, one game is called Word at a Time Story. You tell one word with a single person in the room and going around like this. Uh, each piece in speaks will go for about four to five sentences. Try to keep using, I would say, try to keep using the past tense. It's fine to use dialogue and other storytelling techniques. Uh, so you can go around doing it that way. Or you could do word at a time proverb, where you just say random words that sound like a sentence. So tell a random sentence one word at a time among your group members. Think of the sentence as if it were a proverb, a wise saying. And at the end, so when sentence finishes, repeat the sentence as a whole. And the next person explains completely by himself or herself what the proverb means. Okay, so, so yes? It, has, it should be kind of grammatical sentence though, right? But, uh, uh, just we should hope so. But it's not we should hope so. I mean, am I, you know, so it, it might, somebody might make a mistake where it's not so grammatical, mm -hmm. but what you can do is you can justify that in terms of what it is. Okay, so, uh, yes. Okay, so for this, yes. Or like the. It's up to you. Oh. It's up to you. If, if you slip, say the cat, some people will use like phrasal verbs. So if you're doing the unit on Lexis in your TESOL program and, you're, <laughs> and you're, you have phrasal verbs and that slips out, then fine. Um, the improv police won't come in, to your house and won't beat you up if they violate the rule. So for these two games, now let's change the groups a little bit differently. Okay, so let's try to have groups of three or four. And then uh, you have to explain what the proverb means. Well, you, you're doing word at a time proverb? You're doing word at a time proverb? Random sentence proverb. Yeah? I don't mind. Word at a time story. They're on the handout. Mm -hmm. It's kind of making up. Yeah, and then so you have to explain. So for yeah. Every day. So yeah, that's a good one. Every day. 
Yeah. So we have I? to talk about what we said. If we go four to five minutes, go. we're going to forget everything. Yeah. Okay. Breakfast. So, um, to bed. <laughs> And yes. okay. one word, two. Two. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, Feel. Uh-huh. The market. Stitch. Stitch. Uh, uh, we got to make some nonsense. Yeah, two words. That's good. Yeah, Heat. Like, that, that seems like <laughs> old property. Yeah. Uh, so every day you eat. Uh, every day you eat. Uh, every day you eat. Uh, you eat uh, for for breakfast. And it makes, it makes you feel comfortable. Every day you eat. Two. And that means... So that's the proverb, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay repeat the whole thing. Every day I go to the market to meet a clown to beat him. <laughs> okay, what does that proverb mean? Does <laughs> every day I go to the market to meet a clown and to beat him? That's very profound. How would you put that in your own words? When you are what you are. Everyone, look at him awkwardly. It means that you go and you work hard every day and tell yourself a funny story before you go to bed at night. Okay. Uh, work hard, play hard. Work hard, play hard. Mm okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm okay. So Let's try some other. Say a word and it's the you end of a sentence. I guess you could say period. Okay. okay. You can move on to the next I'll sentence. give people two more minutes. I'm going to go. Women. One thing to please. Barely. Doing something. I'm going to go. What is that? Fast women surprise. Turtles. 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 In a far away. Fairies. I'll start. When? No. Reading. Which was? Fast women surprise turtles when eating. Very famous book. What does that mean? Fast women surprise turtles when eating. Four minutes? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Deep proverb. Eating muffin. Okay. Uh, everyone, in the interest of time, uh, let me say good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, I want to go through a few of these things. Uh, there are different games on the handout. It, it explains different games that you can try. Change, countdown, growing and shrinking machine, three line scenes. Uh, we won't have time to describe these, and uh, and what I would say is there's resources I'll get to in a moment about these particular games. Um, one thing I want to stress for you, everyone here is improv principles. So um, improv has kind of a philosophy to it, and one of the principles <coughs> is called acceptance. That's saying yes to the input that you're given. So if if someone said, if 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 I say hi 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 father. And, and I reach out my hand, and you say, well, I'm not your father, or I'm not the father. That's wrong. If someone says your father. Sometimes somebody said, hello, Sister Bethany. I had to be Sister Bethany in a scene. Sorry. OK. I left one hand out, so you've got eight minutes. OK. OK, cool. Uh, no worries. We have other things to do. OK, justification. Acceptance and justification work very well together. Uh, that's saying and to the input. Yes, and is sometimes described as the philosophy of improv. Now think about yourself as a teacher. You've probably used yes, and in the classroom. If you're, if you're saying, okay, give me, give, me examples of, give me examples of fish. Maybe they'll uh, give me examples of fish. And they might give you like names of fish, a shark or something like that. And someone says, whale. You probably don't go, oh, is that really an example of a fish? <laughs> you probably don't do that, right? You probably start to write whale on the board and you say, well, does a whale breathe water or air? And you try to look quizzically. And then you realize that, oh, they said, oh, no, no, it breathes air. So is that a fish or is it a different animal? I think that's a different animal, OK? And then you might change that because you understand that a lot of teaching is dialogic. It's taking what your students give and doing something with it, even if it's a mistake. And a lot of things were like that. A lot of creative things were like that. So sometimes, I mean, the transporter in Star Trek, 
That was because they didn't have money to put people on ships and go down to the earth when they first did the TV show. <laughs> Sometimes things are made out of necessity because they don't have better things. So justification and acceptance, these you can think of as two aspects of teaching, and it's why it's one of the great reasons to do improv, right? Because then you develop that not just as tools in the classroom, but as a way of life. And if something's a way of life, then it's better for you in the classroom. Trust. Accepting someone is valid. Now, I don't know if I'm the biggest expert on trust. I'm probably one of the least experts on trust. But a lot of what you have to do is accept what the other person gives you as part of the structure of improv. So if they make a mistake in the circle and they use a weird word when you're doing word at a time proverb, you still have to make it work and you still have to be accepting. But here we're accepting the person in the process of doing it. Uh, so that too is something that happens in the classroom. Uh, sometimes we make the mistake of correcting things in the book uh, correcting things that the student wrote because this, we thought the student meant something else. And we didn't understand, no, the student actually meant that. There's sometimes we lapse into distrust in the process of doing our job. So another reason to do improv is to build that sense of trust for yourself and the students. Listening, hearing as if you want to change. There's a video called The Way of Improvisation. And the guy that did that video, I forget his name, talks about hearing as if you, you listening is, is hearing because you want to change something about yourself. So listening is a process. If you're doing a character, your character might change over time. Instead of you having a fixed idea, oh, I want my character to go over here, by having the interaction with other people, then you're, you're putting yourself in a situation where you listen more. And so that's an important philosophic thing to keep in mind in the classroom and also when you're doing improv. Uh, so that's an argument also for materials that are designed by the students, that are created by the students, and using those to teach rather than just simply you impose upon them to do other things. For that, look, uh, there's, learner -centered, there's books on learner-centered materials that are uh, into. And of course, play. These are, I'll describe these as the five principles. There are all these lists of principles of improv online and they, they have some similarities and differences. But play is important. And by play, I mean doing something challenging for the joy of doing it, um, uh, not for learning. So remember that here is your game. They're miming something. Now, they don't need to do that in order to acquire uh, target item, target language items, right? But it is a play component. If they have to stand up during some kind of game, or if they have to just move a small toy or, or flip a coin or something that's physical but not necessarily connected to the target objectives, then that adds for something special in the classroom that's not just uh, uh, accomplishing the objectives of the lesson. Okay, any comments here? Yes, ma'am. I guess in play, mm -hmm. No, you can have a goal in mind, but uh, often there's goals, there's rules in games, there's goals in games, uh, but it's not necessarily that it's an educational or pedagogical aspect. So having something like that in your classroom is fine. Um, and so sometimes we do this with our personalities, right? We have inside jokes, we have, we have uh, things we talk about, we might have nicknames, things like that. Okay, so when we apply improv principles, things we can give suggestions for scenes, having other students give them. I think that's a matching thing, or is that a word thing? Okay, uh, just to go through these, know where to get your ideas. Uh, you can get ideas in books that you talk about, give suggestions for scenes, having other students give them. Sometimes that encourages them a little bit more. Three, get students to form ideas based on established context. Your textbook that you're using in class, the reading or the dialogue suggests the next activity or suggests a scene. If two people say, we're going to meet each other in a coffee shop, OK, but no talking, I have to study, that's in my textbook in school, then what happens next? So the material you have suggests scenes, uh, even if it's historical, even if it's scientific. 
you can use those as foundations for your improv ideas. Textbook exercises can trigger scenes. Think of the grammar books where there's A, da da da, B, da da da, and just two people talking just to display the grammatical form. Well, you know, that's only part of the conversation. What happens next from there? So you can use even the most boring grammar books as stimulation for these activities. Teach structures from improvisation allow for greater fluency. Um, so um, I teach, for example, uh, what a pickup line is. This is for like college students or even high school students. I've taught this. And I have, and I broke down the genre. I've taught how to do commercials. Are you tired of your suits these days? Do they not zing out and, and impress people? Well, no more. And you can teach the structures, and structures are a good foundation for any improvisation. So any particular genre analysis skills that you have can be used in the classroom. OK, so this is about implying improvisation. I think we're running a little short on time. It is a matching activity on the handout. Um, if you wind up matching it and getting it wrong, you might invent a new principle that's better than anything on this handout. So I'm just going to go through that um, just very quickly. Uh, assign other parts. Who is the problem person? I'll say problem person. Munje <laughs> in. I'll do a. Uh, yeah, I'll, you know, it's not the same because it's Munje and Munje is. is so, it's a little, so I'll do something like that. Suggested improvisation is a study technique because they can study this way from their textbooks. Encourage gesture and pantomime. Experiment with posture, with standing up, sitting down. Uh, start circle games at the end of the circle with higher proficiency. Uh, praise the attempt, not success. Uh, don't become a crazy drama coach person. Just be a normal person. Adapt some improv activities into writing activities. Some of these things are not good for your levels. Try scenes with two or three performers. Then a big group, sometimes that gets a little bit harder sometimes. So scenes experimenting with different numbers are fine. Evolution from a suggestion is okay. You can start with department store, but if you're in a jungle at the end, that's fine. <laughs> Don't think you, you have to be married to this suggestion. And your resources, there's a free resource that's mentioned on the handout, improvencyclopedia.com. Um, easy is the book Truth and Comedy by <clears throat> Dill Close and Sherna Halpern, a classic. Tessel Friendly, Drama and Improvisation by Ken Wilson, and Dialogue Activities by Nick Bilbro. Yours truly wrote the review in the Cortisol Journal for the second book. Uh, get involved. There's no, why don't you join your own improv group or make your own? And um, if you're interested in classics in this field, there's Viola Spolin, there's Keith Johnstone. Those people provide interesting books. In fact, Keith Johnstone influenced the book dialogue activities. So these people are there. And for your own class, do one of these next week. Uh, choose somehow, some way, somewhere with other modifications you need just to get it out of your system. Well, I, I did one, all right. I'm finished with it, OK, man. Get yourself started. If it's the kind of thing you want to continue with, then continue with it. And that is my presentation. My, e my Email's there, mrfussmangolbangi.gmail.com. Uh, there's me right here. Uh, these people are, well, he's still in Korea, 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 gone, gone. OK. Uh, I shouldn't say gone, gone with a laser pointer. It's kind of scary. <laughs> uh, my cacao is Roger Fusselman with no space there. And there's my email, et cetera. And I, is that information on here? Yeah, my email's here. OK. And that, since we're running short on time, is it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being part of this conference. Thank you for being part of this presentation.